Hi everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back to Ask Ornstein. January is here and that means clubs can again make use of the transfer market. But which of them will be the busiest? And what next for Frank Lampard after his expensively assembled Chelsea side slipped to a fourth defeat in six games? If you haven't signed up to The Athletic yet, now is a great time with our special January sales offer of just $3.99 a month. That's pounds or dollars. Just go to theathletic.com forward slash askornstein. As always, there's some brilliant content on the site, including exclusive interviews with Matthias de Ligt and Sami Kadira, as well as our story that Lampard is on thin ice at Stamford Bridge. Support for Ask Ornstein is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code ASK, that's A-S-K, at checkout. Okay, the first question of 2021 comes from Luke who asks, do you think Lampard will be sacked in the near future? Or if the board are going to stick with him, what kind of long-term expectations are they placing on him this season and next? Luke, I'll begin by pointing you straight in the direction of a piece published after Sunday's defeat against Manchester City, written by my colleagues Simon Johnson and Liam Toomey, that essentially says Lampard's position is now under serious threat and that Chelsea are already considering potential alternative candidates if he is to lose his job. Now, we're not saying that anything is imminent. We can all see the issues at play and the pressure building on Lampard. We also know how Chelsea have historically dealt with these kind of predicaments. The big question is whether Lampard will buck that trend and earn a stay of execution. There are definitely some problems in the Chelsea dressing room. Lampard has all but admitted as much. When you're working with such a big group, when you don't manage to shift all of the players you want to during a transfer window, and they're not alone in that, a number of other clubs are facing similar predicaments, then you'll always get disgruntled players, especially those who are being left out of the matchday setup on a regular basis. Another problem for Chelsea is that their major signings, Kai Havertz and Timo Werner, have not worked out as hoped so far, and if Lampard is to get the time, then he'll have to get that right. If we look at board level, on the Ornstein and Chapman podcast, Liam Toomey mentions that in normal circumstances, if Chelsea weren't under a transfer ban, Lampard simply would not have got this job. It almost certainly would have gone to somebody more experienced, proven, higher profile. And there are some in and around Chelsea that we know weren't in favour of his appointment at the time. So with that kind of backdrop, if results take a turn for the worse, like they are at the moment, you often notice that sympathy is quite thin and these issues bubble to the surface quicker than they normally would. Loads of you have asked whether Chelsea would still be interested in signing Declan Rice if Lampard is no longer in charge. Truthfully, I don't know, but I suspect they wouldn't because this is a target that has been driven by Lampard. And as I've reported in the past, there are some at Stamford Bridge who harbour reservations including whether Rice has corrected certain perceived weaknesses that contributed to the decision to release him from their academy as a teenager, and also the sheer scale of finance it would take to get him out of West Ham. If you saw the mailbag that I did, published on The Athletic on Boxing Day, we go into this situation in more detail and point out that we think he does remain the primary focus of Chelsea's attention in terms of incomings for January, but that absolutely doesn't mean it will happen in January or in the future. And given those reservations that I mentioned, there are people I speak to within the game that think Lampard should be very careful about pushing the Chelsea hierarchy too hard for Rice because it could contribute to his downfall. Will Lampard be given time? Well, at pretty much any other Premier League club, yes. And we appear to be seeing the benefits of that over in North London, where Mikel Arteta is showing the early signs of recovery with Arsenal, although they are two very different clubs. Personally, I think Lampard deserves quite a lot longer, but it doesn't mean he'll get it. These are very challenging circumstances. The transfer ban, the global health pandemic, some of his new signings, having a very complicated introduction to life in England and the Premier League. It feels like relatively early days. Not so long ago, Chelsea were on a long unbeaten run, whispers about a new contract for Lampard. He led them through to the Champions League knockout stages with a game to spare top of their group. And I do know that in negotiations with the likes of Werner about joining Chelsea, Lampard spoke about a two-year project that would see him blend world-class young players with experienced pros to lead Chelsea back to being competitive for the top domestic and European honours. He reassured them that he had the club's backing on that and that even if there was a downturn in results, they wouldn't act as they have with previous managers. But 
As we all know in this game and with this club, old habits can die hard. It's possible Lampard benefits from the current state of the managerial market. For example, Maurizio Pochettino, greatly admired by the Chelsea hierarchy, has recently joined Paris Saint-Germain. Another who people I speak to rate highly, Marcelino, formerly of Valencia and Villarreal, has just joined Athletic Bilbao. One of the most promising young coaches in world football, Julian Nagelsmann, has guided RB Leipzig to the Champions League knockout stages. So any club wanting to take him will most likely need to wait until the summer. Chelsea have considered Nagelsmann previously. I don't think they were convinced. I'd be intrigued to see if they are in the future. It would open the interesting prospect of Chelsea going down the German route if Lampard is dismissed and they need to rejuvenate the form of Havertz and Werner. It may also bring in names like Thomas Tuchel, who in recent days has reportedly been pushed to Chelsea already since leaving PSG. Although there are some concerns within football about his character and ability to deal with big club personalities and politics. What about Max Allegri, another free agent? Chelsea have gone Italian in the past with Conte and Sarri. Mixed results. I think there may be a bit of reluctance to do so again for now. And domestically, Brendan Rodgers' name has been mentioned a lot. I might direct you back to a piece on The Athletic by Liam Toomey and Simon Johnson a year ago, almost exactly which explains why Brendan Rodgers will never get the Chelsea job. There is a lot of history there. And then somebody who has built a really good reputation in the Premier League is Southampton manager Ralph Hasenhutl. So I think with a lot of big clubs and him, it's a case of watch this space. Lampard's focus just needs to be on the task at hand. They've got big away matches at Fulham, Leicester and Tottenham, not too far on the horizon. At Chelsea, you're judged on results the atmosphere in the dressing room, and crucially, most importantly, the view of Roman Abramovich. Be in no doubt that Chelsea will be scouring the managerial and coaching market in a not too dissimilar way to what they do with players. If Abramovich wants to make a change, if he's had enough of Lampard, and we are told that he's very unhappy, then he won't hesitate to act immediately. But I have the feeling that he'll get a little bit more time to prove his worth. Here's one from Alex. Any news on Aguero? Should it worry some City fans that he can talk to teams abroad? Alex, as you indicate, Sergio Aguero is now in a position to sign a pre-contract agreement with a foreign club. His Manchester City deal expires in June. That's the same month that he turns 33, so a big decision ahead for both parties. As far as I know, City are yet to approach Aguero for talks over a new contract. That can change at any moment, but if it doesn't, then he's on his way. Should you be worried? I don't think so. He's been a great servant, one of the finest strikers of his or any generation, but he has suffered from a lot of injuries of late. To my knowledge, he loves it at Man City. He would really like to extend his stay further. And that's a view, I believe, shared by many at the top of the club. But perhaps we should be asking if it's a view shared by Pep Guardiola, because the pair have not always had the smoothest of relationships. Pep Guardiola, having signed a new contract of his own, will be looking to reshape his squad somewhat over the summer. Will that include Aguero or not? City have been linked with a host of top strikers, the likes of Mbappe, Haaland, Kane, Lionel Messi, who of course is a very close friend of Aguero and an international teammate, but I don't have any concrete information on that. We should though keep a really close eye on that free agent market. Those two, then players such as Sergio Ramos, David Alaba, Jeannie Wijnaldum. I think at the very top level, they will still be able to command a very lucrative Bosman free transfer. But lower down, there will be many players who in this COVID affected market just won't be able to get that sort of money anymore. And so you may see them desperately looking to seal transfers in the January window rather than entering that precarious environment next summer. The next question is on Liverpool and asks how likely they are to sign Sven Botman this month. Do they really have the capacity to sign anyone in January? 
Sven Boltman has made such a positive impression since joining Lille from Ajax. He's still only 20 years old, but he's already attracting admiration from some of Europe's leading clubs. Liverpool have one of the best recruitment operations in world football, so I'm sure they'll be across it, but we're told that they don't have any specific interest at this moment in time and are not working on Botman for the summer either. Now, things can change, so there's no point us giving too definitive an answer either way. Whether they have the capacity to do anything in January, I presume they do, but I think all of their plans, as things stand, are still focused on the summer. To bring in somebody that's decent value for money and can make an immediate impact is not easy. Many people feel that Liverpool simply have to do something, especially at centre-half, and I'm sure that they have their options and list of potential recruits, but right now, I don't sense that anything specific is brewing. Ben asks, do you think the recent resurgence of Arsenal alters their January plans, especially with Smith Rowe bringing much needed creativity in the number 10 role? And are there any other Arsenal players close to leaving? There's always been huge belief in Emile Smith Rowe at Arsenal, Ben. He came through the academy, shone on loan at Huddersfield, and now that potential is starting to be realized. He does still need to be tested in front of Premier League crowds at some point. He needs to prove his fitness consistently. There will be ups and downs, and that's why Arsenal, at this moment in time, see him ideally as being backup, support, competition for a world-class number 10, filling in where necessary, learning off of them, and eventually succeeding them. With Mesut Ozil out of the picture, Arsenal are going to try and sign somebody if they can, but it needs to be somebody at the top level. It needs to be... Um, somebody better than Emile Smith-Rowe right now. And that's not easy to find, especially from Champions League clubs who have very little money themselves and so are going to ask for huge finances. It means it's not guaranteed. Arsenal don't just want to go for any old player and make mistakes of the past. They want to get the right player, even if that means waiting until the summer. But definitely don't rule it out. Let's see if the ownership backs Mikel Arteta with money in the market again, or whether it needs to be a loan deal. Either way, I do see it rumbling on towards the end of the window, possibly even deadline day itself again. We talked about Dominic Sabozlai a while ago. He was a player of interest to Arsenal, but they did have reservations that were reported on The Athletic by Tom Warville. He ended up joining RB Leipzig. I revealed in my mailbag that was published on Boxing Day that among the options Arsenal were considering is Julian Brand of Borussia Dortmund. I don't think that situation has developed as yet. That's not to say it won't. He was left out of their last match. Let's see if he has any involvement in the next couple and whether he starts to agitate for a move. Christian Eriksen is a player who many clubs have been linked with and I've consistently been told that Arsenal do not want to sign him. It's not the age profile that they're looking for. Isco is a player who there have been many reports about and I understand that Mikel Arteta is not inclined to pursue that one. And the big one that's been talked about in recent days is Emi Buendia of Norwich City. He is a player on Arsenal's recruitment list. He's not at the very top. He's a player they've scouted for, I think, more than 18 months. They liked him in the Premier League. They've liked him in the Championship but they're not going to pay the reported £40 million fee for him. And Norwich will be desperate to keep hold of him at any cost because he's so important to their promotion bid. I certainly don't think that Arsenal will be willing to let homegrown talents like Reese Nelson and Joe Willock move in the opposite direction on a permanent basis. A loan deal of some description might be considered for those sorts of players because the aim of this transfer window, the priority is for Arsenal to slim their squad, to get players out having game time, but also in some other cases away from the club completely. Kolasinac has gone on loan to Schalke, Saliba's gone on loan to Nice, but they do have really high hopes for Saliba and hope that he will come back, compete for a place and be a big part of their future, despite a very underwhelming time at the club since signing in a high profile deal from St Etienne in 2019. There's optimism that Socrates will agree to leave the club this month. Uh, Skodra Mustafi has a big decision to make because he might not want to risk waiting to leave as a free agent in the summer because you might not be able to command the sort of huge uh, Bosman salary 
of the past. And so if you're faced with a deal that you could take in January, there's every chance that you'll look to do that. And then Mesut Ozil. Arsenal will continue to try to get him out, but it's up to him whether he takes one of the options on his plate, such as Fenerbahce, or whether he wants to do what he said he will do all along and wait until the end of his contract and then have a clean break in the summer of 2021. So lots going on at Arsenal. Support for Ask Ornstein is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. The world is about to get a lot less hairy because you can now buy Manscaped products and finally use the right tools for your family jewels, like the Lawnmower 3.0 electric trimmer with its cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces grooming accidents and keeps you feeling smooth. Its battery lasts up to 90 minutes, so you can even use it for the entire length of a football match. Then comes the Weed Whacker, your essential nose and ear hair trimmer. Both products are part of the Manscaped Performance Package that includes a t-shirt, athletic boxer briefs, deodorant, toner for, yes, down below, a wash bag to keep it all together, and a newspaper. Why? Well, why not? Happy shaving. 